Thank you guys all so much for coming. We're really excited to have you in our VIC lounge and to introduce um, you guys to our Formula 3 driver, James Rowe Jr. Um, and then just as a reminder, all of you guys should have put your number, the white number, into the helmet. And then at the end of our session, we'll be doing a drawing for a um, all expenses paid trip for two to the Formula One um, US Grand Prix in Texas. So it's super exciting that um, Formula Three Americas gets to support that um, in October. So um, cool, I guess. Let's yeah. get started. No, thank you again for coming. And uh, as Cara said, looking forward to having two lucky people to a race this year. Yeah. All right. So. Um, kind of how this is going to work is I'm going to ask James just some basic questions um, just about him, how he got into racing, all that fun stuff. And then um, once we kind of touch on all the basics, we're going to just open it up to questions to you guys. So if you think of anything um, during our conversation, um, feel free to keep it in the back of your mind. Um, he's really happy, open and willing to answer any questions you may have. So, yeah. um, okay, let's get started. Um, so, James, can you first tell us um, what got you into racing and how you started? So, uh, my family has always been involved in motor racing. My uncle was a professional racing driver back in the 80s and 90s here in America. He raced in IndyCar, IMSA, Japanese sports cars, Le Mans, and so on. So, growing up, the, the passion for motor racing was always there. Growing up, it was everything we watched in our houses at the weekends. And uh, I always wanted to get involved in it, but just didn't really have the let's say the money to get involved it's 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 an expensive sport so i had the passion but didn't have the money and uh, the deal was with my uncle and and my dad that i had to save up enough money to purchase my own race car and i done that um it took me to the last 15 years of age to get the money together and eventually bought my first race car at 15 years of age and uh, my uncle and i went to run it and uh, the rest is history really from there so can you tell us a little bit about um, what it's meant to you in your career having that family history and um, having that type of support? Yeah, you know, it's, it's huge having someone like my uncle in my corner because he's been through it all. He's raced the Indy 500, he's done Le Mans, he's done Japanese sports cars and so on. So that knowledge that he has is extremely valuable. So the average guy who starts racing has to learn that himself. So having him in my corner has been a huge benefit and... Um, Let's just say the, the learning rate has been a lot faster because he's been there all the time. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little, ba a little bit about your decision to pursue racing instead of doing something like going to university or things along those lines? Can you tell us about the decision-making process with your family and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, it's kind of a, an interesting story. So I obviously started racing quite late at 15 years of age, right in the middle of, of high school in, in Ireland. and with exams and so on coming up we had kind of a decision to make because racing was going well we were winning a lot of races but also finals were coming up in school so sat down with our with our family and, and had a chat and got some advice and everyone just said look the motor racing's going well you got to pursue it it's, it's something that you don't get a chance in to do that often and um I was glad they, they made that decision, to say the least. Anyhow, I uh, took the decision to go out motor racing full whack and um, ended up then just trying to balance school life out. It was three-day week in school, and you'd go racing on a, or leave school on a Thursday, travel to the UK or Europe, and um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday away, fly back Monday, and then school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday again, and then repeat. So it was... Uh, it was it was tough because in the meantime the deal was that I had to finish high school. I need to have a backfall just in case something happens, and uh, it was a huge balancing act. Yeah. Are you happy with the decision that you've made as of now, or? Yeah, I mean it's it's been tough. It it it's it looks great at times, but there's a lot of struggle in the backgrounds. But yeah, I'm 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 happy with how it is. I mean. I guess sitting here at, at Con Expo, big trade show, speaking to all you guys, it makes it justifiable as well. And uh, we've had success and won every step of the way, so I can't complain right now. Yeah. Uh, so John Campion, I just want to touch a little bit about on your relationship with him. And I know as someone who wasn't familiar with the racing industry, I didn't really know who he was or how big of an impact he's had. Um, but for those of you who don't know, um, John Campion is a uh, Irish... American entrepreneur. He founded um, Show Power 
Um, they are a California company that provides portable um, generators for tours for um, bands like the Rolling Stones and U2 and stuff like that. And um, he served as chairman and CEO of APR Energy, and they um, specialize in the deployment of electrical generators um, for areas that have been struck by natural disasters and things along those lines. And then um, with his interest in racing and stuff like that, he formed um, the Team Ireland Foundation, which is a national program to support um, young racers like James. So can you just tell us a little bit about your relationship with him and how he's had an impact on your career? Yeah, just like you said, John's career is, in his own right, is extremely impressive. Um, just very briefly, he came to America at 20 years of age with a... Uh, $20 in his pocket and spent his first night sleeping in a cardboard box at the back of a cheap hotel in, in LA and um, then got a job working as a roadie for the Rolling Stones and Elton John on their world tour. Went around fixing all their, their generators and light bulbs and so on, but he was always the brains behind the operation. And uh, back then there was huge inconsistency in power um, at these concerts. and. He was on Michael Jackson's world tour in uh, the late 80s, and um, the guys spotted that. He, he's, he's a smart guy, and they wanted to find a solution for the inconsistency in power. And long story short, they brought him in, said to him, what, what do you want to do? Um, we want to solve this issue. So he had an idea in his head. He got his first loan of uh, $100,000 off Michael Jackson, set up his his own business called Show Power, got containers and put jet engines inside them. And uh, you turn on your jet engine and you'd instant power. So he grew that business to the degree where he supplied power all around the world for all these big bands. And um, then, as Kara said, to the degree when natural disasters hit Haiti and tsunamis hit Japan, he was flying in uh, generators and powering up nations. Anyhow, back to motorsport. <laughs> um, he's a huge interest in motorsport from Ireland and uh, in 2016 he set up a program called Team Ireland which is a program that's used to pick two racing drivers every year to fast track their career and give them the necessary tools to become professional and get in the right doors and just essentially create opportunities so he done that I've been lucky enough to be on it since its inaugural year and uh, he then started sponsoring me personally in uh, 2018, and then we became very close friends, and now he has his own race team called CJJ Motorsport, and um, it's a race team that uh, has one vision, and it's just to get, get an Irish man to the Indy 500 and hopefully be the first guy to win it. So we're on a, we're on a cool journey. He's a, he's a cool guy himself, and uh, he, he knows how to be successful, and he's self-made, so it's, the motto is hard work pays off, so that's, that's what we do with him. We're hoping to help get you to that goal as well. So Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on your award that you won this year as Motorsport Ireland's Young Racing Driver of the Year. You've been runner up in the past. So what does it mean to finally, to finally win? Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was good. So I won an award in Ireland this year called uh, Motorsport Ireland Young Racing Driver of the Year. So in Ireland every year, we have an award ceremony, and uh, the most prestigious award to win is it. It comes with a 50,000 euro prize and government funding, and um, it's, it's just huge recognition. So I've been up for it for the last three years, didn't get it for, for various reasons, and this year was the year. So uh, it's the year that I, that I probably needed it most and deserved it most. So I guess everything happens for a reason at certain times, and uh, I learned a lot from the years that I didn't get it. And now that I have it, it's, uh, it's just the icing on the cake. And uh, it's good to get recognition from your home country and have the government behind you and so on. So um, yeah, it's just nice to, nice to get recognized by Ireland. Yeah. Uh, so what are your goals for this coming season, this coming year? This year, it's uh, a win it or bin it attitude, I think. We're uh, second year in Formula 3 and uh, learned a lot last year. It was the first year at a professional level. so going to take everything we learned last year and um, we with some good results last year one good win at Road America and I just push forward on that and um, bring it on the teams came on quite a bit and uh, I've learned a lot and developed so um, we will know all soon but yeah we want to go for the win yeah of course and then what are your goals for your overall career 
Uh, the goal's pretty simple. I mean, the, well, the actual goal itself is to be a fully professional, sustainable, long-term career from, from motor racing. And uh, the dream, as we said, is to be the first Irish man to win the Indy 500. Uh, if you achieve the dream, we'll be achieving the goal at the same time. So the plan's to go for the dream and um, try and get the goal along the way. Yeah. Um, so you're part of Global Racing Group, which is, um, there's four of you guys. What is it like to both be competing as a team and then also be competing as an individual. Yeah, you know it's funny because it's it's a balancing act, right? You you you've you've three teammates who are in the same car as you, same engineer, and it, it's a team. But it kind of comes a point in the weekend where you got to switch that. At the end of the day, you're racing against them, so um, it's a huge balancing act. I mean, up until through practice and practice one, practice two, you kind of speak to your guys and see what they're up to and you're looking at their data and their videos and their onboard vid uh, footage and so on and trying to learn things and bouncing questions off each other and then I guess as it comes to qualifying then the table completely turns because now they're rivals you you got to qualify ahead of them and uh, you uh, throw that out the window once once qualifying hits and from the rest of the weekend they're there to beat there's a, a saying in motorsport that the first guy you got to beat is your teammate so um, it's it's an interesting dynamic but um, you have to you have to work with them too otherwise they'll park you to a side and you won't get to learn some information so it's it's it, it's a funny relationship um what what race this year are you most excited about which track uh i gotta be honest it's it's racing in texas at the end of the year alongside formula one i mean i've never raced alongside formula one someone here is going to be at the race and uh there's three hundred thousand people there over two days it's a huge, huge race, the American Grand Prix, I mean, it doesn't get higher, right? Formula One's the, the, the most renowned series worldwide, and uh, to be there is, is going to be pretty special racing the Circuit of the Americas.